we're the otter because they live in the water and the water is really important to us. And then we wear the deer on our feet and in our dresses because the deer are a source of food. In our hair, we wear feathers and that we represent the eagle feather and how important the air is. They all represent the elements that we need to live to survive. That's our connection to this Columbia Plateau. I work for the Yakima Nation Fisheries. We conduct uh, juvenile salmon, steelhead population surveys. There's little salmon there. There's a whole bunch of them. They just hatched. Rock Creek, a lot of it is hard to access. There were some good landowners and they allowed us to go in and co collect data. Since the 70s, there was a, a not so good relationship between a landowner and the Yakima Nation. He owns a lot of the watershed. To pursue this project, I'd have to get his permission. And, and it was really hard at the beginning. A lot of the ranchers and a lot of the tribal folks in the area, they all said, he's not gonna let you on his land. And you know, I was kind of worried, but I went to him and I approached him. He didn't want to come out to the door and he just stuck his head out. And then I told him my mission, the fisheries, I need to be protected. He was concerned for the, the fish. And so he allowed it and, and I was real thankful. He'd be herding his cattle out and we'd be doing our surveys up and we kind of cross paths and he just smiled. He was happy. And I think I was the first Yakima person to enable to um, work with him. I started looking around for land that would be appropriate for a vineyard. And that brought me to the gorge. Got the whole family here. <laughs> the gorge has a lot of different habitats within a very short distance. And that's what makes actually this area very exciting. I think I got a little disenchanted with agricultural research. There was a lot of money being put in by the pesticide companies, and also there's a lot of pressure for fragmentation. People will subdivide their land to get more money and create the obstacles for our natural system to function properly. And so there's constant conflict. Humans show a lot of fear to nature. Because we're showing fear, is actually an indicative that we've lost our connection with the natural world. And because we don't know it, we're fearful of it. The approach we've taken, the vineyard is part of the natural system. It was a logical step to take our winemaking and make a very natural wine. We don't add anything, we don't add no sulfite. We just help shepherd it through its stages. When I first started it, it wasn't clear that it was gonna work but I had faith in it. The moment that I decided I was gonna work in conservation, honestly, was when I was four years old. All through growing up, I, I was really just interested in farmland preservation and ended up going to school for conservation policy. I got into this work at the age of 23. I'm pretty young for an ED. Just kind of jumped, jumped right in. Outdoor recreation economy that's so essential. It's important to be fearless in this line of work. We're dealing with threats to funding easements, tax incentives for landowners. I'm getting up in front of, you know, uh, committees and, and testifying at hearings. Also protect the natural resources, the clean water that's so important to our state. If we don't make conservation a priority and really double down on, on protecting the places that we care about the most right now, we lose our, our history and the culture of this region. We also lose huge parts of our economy. In the U.S., when the housing market crashed, 
That's when I moved here. Couldn't find a job, didn't know what to do. So I started working in the yard. I found out about the Pacific Northwest through the soil, through the dirty in my hands. Come on, Jack. I currently work as a technician for the Backyard Habitat Certification Program. It's a program to revitalize the urban landscape. It's about bringing elements of wilderness into your backyard to support species that are already here and thriving in this eco-region. I'm sitting right here talking to you with the, the same fear that everybody out there feels. Change is imminent. Change is just the beat at which the expression of life happens. I feel that if I only focused on the fears that I felt at that moment when I moved, I never would have enjoyed this path that led me to the Backyard Habitat program. I would have missed the opportunity to engage in something as beautiful and fulfilling as working with nature. We see ourselves separate from nature, but we are nature. And taking care of it is just the reflection of loving ourselves and our communities. It's the same thing. Living on the North Coast has been really the total thrill of my life. It has been my life. I've been here 73 years. First porridge. <laughs> Can't go without that. <laughs> I was a biology teacher at Seaside High School for 31 years. Saying conservation in 1970 in a biology classroom had some challenges. Spent a couple of times in my principal's office. Uh, having discussions about uh, talking about conservation a little too much in my classes. That time, everybody, all the high schools were trying to pretend like they were colleges. 15, 16 year olds reading books, they were learning nothing. Went down to the shop with all the textbooks, bandsawed the backs off of the books, and then reorganized them into just two or three page sections that I'd pull and just give the students those little pieces and then we're going to use the landscape as the textbook. So that was where the photography come in and we'd start out photographing through the microscope. What I found along the way was that that camera was an interface with uh, young people and so I started piling up the cameras and got a wrote a grant to Kodak, got 10 cameras. So it really become an instrument of education. We're really tied to the Columbia Plateau through our foods, you know. Teaching was that the foods take care of us. You know, they all sustain us so that we can live and in return, we're supposed to take care of it. Nature is inherently messy. That's what it likes, that's what all the species like. I think it's important always to, to look at it from a point of view of how do we fit in. That just cements that connection to the wild system that we're, we're trying to live within. And we have to fit into that system. And that's what we're trying to do. Is that what we're trying to do? <laughs> She'll learn. It's absolutely critical that, that we're bold and decisive. Now is the time with all of these challenges that face our environment. It's the right thing to do. When things are changing the most, that's when creativity sparks the best. Humans are creative beings. We're curious beings full of limitless potential. So to be fearful is to close ourselves to that potential. Just being fearless, but being fearless because you know that you have a vision and a plan that fits a culture got to think about it in a larger context. That's really what I want to do with my photography is I want to be able to communicate that larger picture of that whole ecosystem as a holistic phenomena.